David Malouf, thanks so much for your time. No, it's a pleasure. Let's start with the easy question. What is happiness? How can we even define it? The question is between what moments of happiness are. We all know those, and I, no one is in doubt about what that is. And it usually comes as, as a surprise. You can't work for it. Uh, and that other kind of settled happiness, kind of contentment, that people feel you can work for in some kind of way and achieve, I'm not sure they're right. <laughs> so there is a difference between happiness and contentment? Uh, yes, I think contentment is a more continuous state and uh, happiness has that kind of quality of your being caught by joyfulness in, in the moment uh, and in a world which is full of surprises uh, and can make you feel how rich or how unexpectedly benign it is or something. And uh, that, those moments of happiness, which can be very intense, may be the best thing we get. Is this concentration on happiness, on being happy, is this something that's really taken off in recent times or has it always been there? I think uh, people who uh, were privileged and therefore had time to sit and think and consider their lives uh, and to contemplate have always felt that the pursuit of, I think probably wisdom and contentment rather than something they would call happiness has always been one of the things that people expected to do. If you were a serious person in the classical world, uh, you wanted to achieve a kind of um, uh, state of uh, contentment which really meant freedom of vulnerability to accident uh, or to contingency or to the demands of others. Um, but of course th that must have been 4.002% of people and most other people were too occupied with keeping body and soul together or staying in work or getting the harvest in or whatever it is they were doing uh, to expect more than moments when they could feel pleased with themselves for having done a job of work well uh, or seeing the joy on a child's face or something if you gave them a small treat uh, or lifted them up and swung them around your head or something like that. I think that uh, the idea of a pursuit of happiness was once only for the few. Uh, of course the change that came was with that famous phrase, pursuit of happiness. I mean when Jefferson sat down to write that Declaration of Independence and used the words life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness as if all three of those were of equal weight and importance, he absolutely changed what people saw as the possibilities of an ordinary life. And it, it, they then, from that point on, I think, expected um, the state and the government to provide conditions where it would be possible to have all those three things. And that's a huge shift in um, the notion of a society, but also the notion of a life in a society. Now you point out in the essay that often when someone says, are you happy, the answer is, well, I've got nothing to complain about, and then they proceed to complain. The mere fact there is complaint there, does that mean there's an underlying unhappiness, or are people merely happy that they can complain? Yeah, I think that it's not an, un, uh, an underlying unhappiness, but an underlying um, discontent. And maybe discontent is in some ways a good thing. It means that we don't think that everything is perfect. We don't think we've got there yet. And that sense of unrest, if that's what you could call it, seems to me to be what drives all things on. I mean, it drives people to believe that there's more to their life than they've yet grasped, um, more to be got out from the world than they've yet got. It also leads us to believe that the world we've created uh, still leaves something to be desired because not everybody has 
what they might deserve. Uh, there's still injustice in the world. There's still all kinds of deficiencies in the world. Although I think what's surprising about the kind of world we live in here and which people in a good many advanced societies live in um, presents is that we've removed from that world almost all the sources of real misery for people. And in some ways that's partly what um, Jefferson meant by providing a situation in which people could pursue happiness, that they weren't impeded in that by injustice, um, l uh, uh, illness, um, uh, homelessness, uh, lack of employment, uh, discrimination. And that would have been the old um, meaning of what happiness was, which is absence of the world's ordinary miseries. We now have a very different reading of happiness as something positive rather than in that sense, um, not in itself negative, but the, the, the um, removal of, of negative qualities. Mm. I looked up a couple of studies about world happiness as to which is the uh, happiest country and in two of them Denmark came out on top and it got me wondering are there certain cultures, certain national mindsets that lend themselves more to being happy? Happiness in individuals for example depends very largely on temperament and I think there is something like temperament that exists in societies and cultures and that's really got to do with the way people deal with one another and how they see one another. And so I think there are ways in which uh, some countries and some cultures and societies do have a capacity to be content. Um, and they're not always advanced societies. I mean, I think there are several places that we would think of as being um, uh, deprived um, societies where people in fact are really by our standards very happy um, and that may mean that that there are things there that we would that we would think would make people miserable and would make us miserable that they they that they are not disturbed by I remember you once defined luxury as something in abundance somewhere else and I wonder if happiness is something similar where people feel if only I was over there somewhere else I'd be happy. I, I don't know I think mostly these days um, an awful lot of us have the capacity to pack up and go there uh, if we think strongly that that's true and you know it's that, that other old thing that you you arrive there and you find that you're the same person <laughs> and that if happiness is perhaps as much related to temperament as to conditions, then you know, your temperament's going to turn up with you. So in your own life you used to live and work in Italy for several months a year. Where were you happier? Where was the sense of well-being greater? In Italy or Sydney? Well, I, I think what was often playing into my sense of well-being and happiness was stimulus and interest and discovery and um, uh, curiosity that's being um, fed in different kinds of ways. I think all of those things are things that, I mean, we can say make us happy, but it really means make us feel we're fully alive in the world. And that's the other question, is whether feeling fully alive in the world um, is a quality that we would uh, want to call being happy rather than feeling um, that the world is being good to you. Um, you know, it, to actually feel fully alive in your skin. Well, you've been recently nominated as a finalist in the Man International Booker Prize, one of 13 writers worldwide. How do you compute that? How does that make you feel? I've always said that I, I've never judged a literary competition and I've always said it's because I could choose a shortlist but once I'd chosen a shortlist I would find it absolutely impossible to choose a winner because um, books are so different from one another, writers are so different from one another 
that your opinion of who you would put at the top on one day would be quite different from what it was yesterday or would be tomorrow. So uh, I think there are no comparisons finally to be made at a certain point. So yeah, it's great to be on the list. And it tells you, yeah, I'm pleased that people see me in the same world as whoever it is, Rohinton Mystery or um, Philip Roth or Armin Aloof, fine. But you know, beyond that, you don't make too much of it. So you don't need the validation of a prize to make you happy? No, but I think, I think almost any writer would tell you that. I mean, your moments of happiness are when you, felt you've, you feel you've got a sentence right or that something has appeared on the page that you didn't know that you knew. Uh, I mean, that's the happiness of writing. To kind of end where we began with your definition of happiness, are you a happy person? Uh, yeah, I think I am a happy person, but I myself would put that down um, to uh, temperament and good fortune rather than um, any hard work I think I've done in sorting out what's true and what's false in the old classical way of the Stoic philosophers or any of the, anybody else. Well, David Malouf, your words have brought a lot of happiness to a lot of people. Thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you very much.